Hi, this is Casey from Aston Labs. And today I'm gonna to be showing you three different ways to edit an image in order to get three different looks. And this wonderful photo was taken by one of our community members and submitted for an edit. If you would like to submit a photo of your own, be sure to check out the link in the description below where you can submit a photo of your own to get edited. So we have here in Lightroom a Lightnary look, and this is with Fuji uh, 400H. And then we have here, this is a, a sort of a more balanced and neutral look. This is Portra 400. And then at the bottom, we have uh, a dark and moody look. And that is with Portra 800 pushed two stops. Um, it's pretty easy to achieve all these looks with our presets, but I wanted to go through and walk through the steps that it would take to get a different look with uh, each of these styles in mind. So let's go ahead. I'm going to uh, hit G and now I'm going to reset these images. Uh, and we can go ahead and get started on the first one. This will be our light and airy look. So uh, in the Fuji original pack, we have four presets. We have Fuji 160 NS, uh, which is a uh, you know, beautiful film, especially for portraits. I really enjoy it. Um, 400H, which is uh, the ultimate light and airy film. You know, it sort of cornered the market there. Um, and then uh, we have Fuji 400H Blue, a, a version that keeps your greens looking a little bit more like that sort of like Californian sage green look, uh, which, which is nice. Uh, and then we have Fuji 800Z, which is the um, sort of this uh, dreamy pink uh, look that you can use when you have a, a bright sky or uh, an area that you want to give that sort of soft dream feel to. For today's edit, we're going to be using Fuji 400H. Um, you know, this is the best preset, I think, for a light and airy look. In any case, let's go ahead and get started. Um, before we do, I'm going to just fix one little thing, and that is to change our angle. In fact, since I still have all three selected, I'm going to click this, turn on our auto sync, and that way, as I fix the uh, this looking a little crooked, it'll fix them on all three. Okay. So with Mass and Labs presets, we always suggest our three-step workflow. It's uh, one of the best ways we've found in order to create a cohesive and consistent result. And the three-step workflow is as follows. The first step is to apply the preset, then adjust exposure, and then correct for white balance. So we'll apply our preset, and we said we're going to use uh, 400H. Um, and you know, 400H is is a film that can handle a lot of light. So we're already gonna go out of the gates. We're gonna adjust our exposure now that we've applied the preset. I'm gonna pull this up and it can really go a long way. Um, you know, Again, this is something that is meant to still hold a lot of detail in those highlights. So the further we push it, we're still okay. Um, if you are worried about your image being overexposed, if we look up in our histogram, uh, anything that is right on this edge, that means uh, that's 100% white. It's, that area uh, is, is gone, basically. And so because we can see there's a little break in here, I already know without a shadow of a doubt that there is nothing that is being truly overexposed. Um, if this dress was still a little too exposed for you, we could go into our next section, um, which would be the tone profiles. And the tone profiles are there to help with sort of contrast control. Um, and we could use something like uh, Highlight Soft. So we have the, the two, two versions of each tool. We have Hard, which sort of adds contrast, and Soft, which recovers um, data. So you, if I wanted to, to push those the whites in her dress or her hair, I could use Highlight Hard. And of course, that's really <laughs> uh, pumping up uh, a lot of those whites. Uh, and if I wanted to recover that, I could use Highlight Soft, which pulls back some of that. You can even see in the, in the sky up here, as I, as I hover over, it's, it's retaining that. Uh, we can do Shadow Hard, which drops the shadows, and Shadow Soft, which uh, recovers. I think for this, I am just going to do uh, Highlight Soft, and that will actually, because it's pulling back some of the, the highlight information, it's gonna allow us to push this just a little further up there and just really get into that sort of light and airy aesthetic. One final thing that I would do to this would be to uh, uh, turn on lens correction. And lens correction, which is in our toolkit section, fixes the vignetting and distortion in images, things that are baked in, especially uh, that are baked into your photos, especially if you're shooting at a wide open aperture. I think this was shot at, I'll hit the I button, we'll double check. Yeah, it looks like it was shot on a 35 millimeter wide open at 1.4. So there's bound to be some distortion and vignetting. Let's take a look. I'll Go ahead and click on this and yeah you can see it just sort of evens out 
the exposure. I'll roll off and on so you can see exactly what that's doing. Um, but it is applying that correction, um, which looks really nice. And for the third step, which I guess I, I glossed over, um, that would be correcting white balance. Um, or And as I'm looking at this, I think it could use with a little bit of warmth, not too much. Honestly, the exposure on this is pretty great. Um, maybe just a little bit of warmth. And yeah, there you go. Um, let's take a look. So here's our before and after. And you know what, I'm as I'm looking at this now, and I feel like I'll hear about it in the comments, is I'm noticing that this still looks a little crooked. So I'm gonna turn on my auto sync one more time and just, there we go, give it a little bit more. Okay, that's looking better. Um, but I guess if, you, if it still looks off to you, let me know. Um, okay, so now let's move on to our next image, which we'll be using for our more balanced and uh, neutral look. Um, so actually, it looks like I didn't put this in here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll turn that on really quick. And let's go ahead and I'm going to open up Portrait Original. So Portrait Original, um, you know, really versatile pack. It is one of the most, you know, Portrait 400 especially is one of the most used films out there. Um, it just has, it does wonderful things to uh, uh, colors in an image and it just, yeah, it looks great. So we'll go ahead and we'll work through our workflow one more time. And I'm going to just apply our preset and I'm going to adjust my exposure and then correct for white balance. I think again with portrait, you know, portrait is a more warm film in general, so it can get pushed that direction and still look natural. Um, of course, I don't want um, this to get too warm. It's not going to look like a, a real dress. Or if I go, you know, if I go too far, especially the greens will go sort of thermonuclear, uh, and and that is a bit much. I think if you really want to, one thing you can do if you're unsure of how you're feeling about your white balance is go too far in one direction. So I'm gonna go just crazy warm or I can go crazy blue. And then if I'm just looking directly at my image and I, you know, I'm going here, you can rock back and forth until you find something that you're like, oh, okay, this looks normal. I'm back to normal again. And when I let go there, that's what normal looks like to me. These whites are looking white. Um, and uh, yeah, the neutrals are looking accurate. They're looking more closely to what I would expect them to look like. Um, again, I think because I want this to feel like that sort of more warm, maybe like a summer afternoon, I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna just pull this up a little bit more and just give it a little bit more warmth. For this, I think because it's a, because it is slightly darker than a, a you know a light and airy look, I'm gonna use our shadow soft and just kind of bring bring that up. In fact, maybe I'll use all soft and. And that is going to you know, bring down those highlights, bring up those shadows, but will also allow me to just pull up the exposure just a little bit more um, and have that still have that balanced feel. Of course, we'll turn on our lens correction to get that just sort of evenness of the exposure. Um, and especially for a balanced look, I think this does a great job. So we'll give you that before and after. Here's before and here is after. And uh, yeah, again, an awesome look with Portra 400. So for our last edit, we're going to be doing a dark and moody edit. So for dark and moody, we will go to the Portra Pushed pack. Portra Pushed is the king of dark and moody. It does these beautiful things to shadows, adds these wonderful uh, warm tones to images. Um, but let's let's go ahead and let's take a look. If I was looking at this image, you know, it's, it looks like it's a little bit later in the day. Um, one of my favorites within this pack is Portrait 800 Push Two Stops. I think it does amazing things. And of course, when you push a film, it becomes a more contrasty. So when you look at this right away, you're like, oh my gosh, that's like, <laughs> it's so crunchy. Everything is crunchy, which again, that contrast is something that happens when you actually push a film. Pushing a film really just means it is sort of baking longer in that development process, if that's like with real film. And that's adding to that contrast, but it also does these amazing things to the tones and images. So where in the other images we had um, less of a, a warm tone, this this is giving us sort of those faded, um, sort of not brown, but sort of a darker warmth um, to to the tones here. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna we've applied our our preset. I'm going to bump up the exposure again. This is something that I'm working on creating as a 
dark and moody look. So I want it. I want the exposure to be a little deeper. In fact, you can even see here in the midtones um, of the histogram, it's you know less information. It's all pushed towards the dark, uh, but there still is information. You know that that is not lost. Um, you know her her dress is a little bright, so we can take a look at what it would look like. But uh, before we do, let's go ahead and correct any of the uh, white balance that we want to. Um, so with with uh, dark and moody images, I tend to find that they are warmer. Like they just, they live in a nice space when they're a little bit warmer than others. Um, yeah, that's that's looking pretty good. Uh, you know, the neutrals on her dress are looking good. His shirt is looking pretty neutral. And the rest of these things, I mean, this is what a pushed look is. This is that sort of moody, um, you know, dark moody wedding vibe aesthetic um, that people really enjoy and think it's uh, phenomenal. It works really well on an image like this. Now, if we wanted to dial back some of this contrast, we certainly can. Um, we can see what it looks like. Just shadow soft is recovering some of that data. Highlight soft is is doing a pretty good job. Uh, I think I just shadow soft is good. I like these highlights being a little bit more punchy. So I hit shadow soft. That looks good. Maybe I'll bring up the exposure just a hair more, not too much. Um, I still want it to have that dark and moody feel. And let's see, I think, you know, for lens correction, I'm gonna leave that off. You know, the vignetting on a darker and moody image really is helping to bring the focus into the center of the frame, just it's adding, you know, a vignette around the image. And yeah, I think that that is looking great. Um, the last thing I would do, especially with a dark and moody image, and this is certainly a personal preference, is I'd go to one of our grain presets. Um, we have two grain presets in here. Let's go ahead and I'll zoom in to their faces so we can take a quick look. So if I go to 35 millimeter grain, you'll see the grain that appears. Oop, let me click that one more time. Maybe, why aren't you doing that? There we go. And you'll see the sort of the, the, the grain comes into here. You know, this has been mapped to replicate 35 millimeter, actual 35 millimeter film grain. Um, and then we also have medium format grain. So when I hover over, when I roll over the medium format grain, you'll see that it just gets a little less pronounced. Oops, there we go. A little less pronounced, um, but it's still there. And uh, I think both do a great job adding texture. For me, I think that the 35 millimeter uh, is just something I prefer more. Uh, and yeah, I think that looks good. It's just adding a little bit more of that sort of film texture to it, which looks really great in a darker, in a darker image like this. Okay, so there you have it. There are three looks from three different packs. You know, we have our Light and Airy, which was the Fuji 400H from the Fuji original pack. We have Portra 400, that sort of more balanced and neutral look from the Portra original pack. And then we have our Dark and Moody edit, which is from the Portra Push pack. Um, all three, you know, just very different styles, but of course all look good in their own right. Uh, if you have any questions or you'd like to see your image edited with our presets, feel free to submit them. We have a link below. You can also always reach out to us directly at m.me forward slash Mastin Labs or through email at support at mastinlabs.com. If you haven't already, be sure to join the Mastin Labs community. Just go onto Facebook and search for Mastin Labs community and join in. You know, there's over 50,000 of us there and we'd love to see you. Um, you don't even have to own any of the presets to be a member. It's just a, a great place for us to hang out and talk. Until next time, have a great day and happy editing.